So I'm in Tokyo, out shopping with three teenagers. FBI, open up! Wait a minute, that doesn't sound appropriate. Let me clarify. I'm out shopping with my kids and nephew. And somehow we end up in a bathing ape store. Earlier, we had stopped in a number of other stores to include streetwear like Supreme, but I have to admit, I wasn't really impressed. Bathing ape, on the other hand, man, this place was rocking. From the shoes that were moving underneath my feet to the clothing and accessories all over the store. They knew how to use color and, you know, maybe not my taste, but I definitely saw what the hype was about. That being said, I couldn't help but notice they had a great selection of hoodies. Now, I didn't end up buying one because I'm more of a classic style kind of guy. But it did get me thinking about this classic menswear item and how so many guys pull it off incorrectly. And yes, I did say classic because the hoodie in its current interpretation has actually been in men's wardrobes for over a hundred years. And hooded garments themselves have been in men's wardrobes for over a thousand years. So how does a man wear a hoodie and look good? How does a guy go about avoiding making the most egregious style mistakes when wearing a hoodie? How to bring a hoodie into your closet, how to style it so it looks great, how to bring it into your inner changeable wardrobe. Gentlemen, that's the subject of today's video. Mistake number one, not even knowing what a hoodie is. So I know some of you guys are classic style guys and you will never wear or own a hoodie. But here's the thing, the company Champion brought the hoodie to the masses back in the 1930s. Yeah, it started off as sportswear, but it was quickly adopted by the masses, especially the working men on the East Coast who were wearing these simple, inexpensive garments to stay warm as they worked warehouses in New York. Now, by definition, a hoodie is a garment typically made of cotton or blended fabric that has a hood attached. It can either be a pullover or have a front and zipper or button closure. Its primary purpose is to keep the wearer warm. However, in the last 60 years, it's become a significant style icon. Mistake number two, not understanding how versatile the hoodie can be. Seriously, you can wear it on its own. It comes in a wide variety of styles, colors, and materials, and you can even dress it up. In fact, since the 1980s, companies like Tommy Hilfiger and Ralph Lauren brought high quality hoodies to the masses that could actually even be worn with blazers. Yes, it can be done. You got to get the fit right. You got to have the right material. But I do think, yeah, if you own the company, if you are working in a creative field, you can pull this look off. Now, a lot of people, whether they know it or not, they associate the hoodie with the 1960s and 70s. That's when we saw this piece of clothing become a counterculture symbol. Various anti-establishment groups wore hoodies. In addition, you saw artists coming out of hip hop wearing hoodies as if it was part of their uniform. This all of a sudden became a staple in the music industry. Companies like Adidas started putting out quite a few hoodies and all of a sudden this became the uniform of street culture. All of a sudden, graffiti artists, people that we would see on the streets wearing these Adidas hoodies everywhere. So, how do you dress a hoodie up? How do you dress it down? So, first up, the graphics. Next up, it's going to be the material and then you want to pay attention to fit. So, if you're going to be going for something that is going to be more streetwear, you can expect that there's going to be more graphics. Oftentimes, the material is going to be made from cotton, although you're seeing a wider variety of different materials used in streetwear. But really, this is where it's going to be made to shine on its own. The idea of a hoodie in this context is it allows the wearer to express their individuality. They're able to do this through color, through design, through unique and limited issue runs of particular types of clothing that only people in a select group are going to have access to. Casual hoodies like this are oftentimes going to come from the fashion world. So, we're also going to see extremes. Occasionally, you're going to see oversized hoodies, hyper attention grabbing details and accents on the hoodie itself. And in general, the hoodie is made to be an outer worn garment in these situations. Hoodies that you can dress up on the other hand are often going to be in muted colors that are going to make them easy to match. They also are going to be made in premium materials. Believe it or not, and I have one in my closet that my wife apparently has stolen, cashmere hoodies are out there and I think they're absolutely beautiful, especially when they fit your body well. And yes, you can wear them with a blazer. That being said, man-made materials, especially polyesters mixing in with a bit of spandex can give a very nice, actually almost cotton-like look. It's going to be a little bit more sleek and it's not going to be as heavyweight. That's another thing about dressier hoodies is they're oftentimes made to fit a little bit closer to the body so that you can layer over them. And when it comes to graphics and accents on these higher end hoodies, they're going to keep it muted in general. So, it's all about the other clothing. The hoodie is just going to be there in support. Now, sports hoodies are going to fit the in-between. Again, these are going to come from Champion, from Adidas. Tons of brands are making them. This one right here, pretty much a sports jersey made from cotton. These are going to be a little bit heavier, a little bit bulkier. They're made to be worn looser as well. You will see these in street where you will see them guys trying to wear, you know, a sports jacket with them. I don't think they're great for sports jackets. They're a little bit too casual. The 
material, but these are also going to be some of the most affordable options out there. And if you're just getting started into hoodies, it's probably the best place to start. Now, the next mistake a lot of guys make is they buy the wrong size hoodie. Now, that sounds like a stupid mistake, but you got to think, how am I going to wear this? Am I going to be wearing this in layers? Am I accounting for shrinkage? And what type of body type do I have? What's my personal preference for wearing a hoodie? Now, with layering, the key here is, are you going to try to dress this up? Are you going to wear jackets over this? In that case, you want it to fit a little bit closer so that you're not going to have all this excess material. And let's not forget shrinkage. So, most quality brands, you're not going to experience much, even if you throw it in a hot dryer, but certain materials, especially cashmere, those luxury materials, you cannot wash it normally. You need to know how to take care, send it off to the dry cleaners, unfortunately, or you can wash it at home, very delicate. But if you're buying 100% cotton hoodie, you need to know that first up, yes, when you do expose it to heat, it's going to shrink. Cotton just naturally does that. And over time, you will start to see this material fade, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Now, I mentioned body type, but yeah, if you're a larger guy, you want a hoodie that isn't going to be stretching anywhere, isn't going to be showing that extra bit you're carrying around the midsection. If you're a thinner guy, you want a hoodie that, you know, isn't going to have a trim cut to it, but isn't going to have so much excess material, a strong wind catches you and blows you over. Now, when I'm looking to buy a hoodie, I first want to make sure that it fits in the shoulders. You want to make sure your shoulder points are on point. And despite this being one of the easiest things to do when you try on the hoodie, so many guys don't look for it or they end up buying a hoodie whose shoulder points are going down their arm. Again, if you're going for the oversized look, this can work. But I think for most guys in most situations, they want to have a hoodie that fits them properly in the shoulders. Next up, we've got the chest and stomach area. I like to have about two to three inches of excess material in the chest or stomach area. Now, a quick test here is the fist test. And you simply just take your hand and you grab, can I grab a fist full of material? That's going to be about two to three inches for most of us. Now, if you can barely grab any material or you're grabbing two fistfuls, you may want to size up or size down. And again, this depends on your size. If you're five foot two, 120 pounds, you are going to want less material versus if you're six foot eight, 350 pounds, you're going to want more material. Now, when it comes to the sleeves, I like for my arms to be able to go down, fully cover the wrist bone. And then when I move my arms up, it should just barely cover the wrist bone. If it goes out way too far, then you're going to have material bunching up and you will find some brands just simply make the sleeves too long for some of us. And I can see different types of wrist cuffs out there, but if you've got rib cuffs, you want to make sure they're not so tight that they're leaving marks on your wrists. And don't forget to try the hoodie itself on. I remember years ago, I bought a hoodie and I could barely get it up over my head. It was strange. Still, you're going to find some other brands that make their hoodies oversized. And the problem with that is it can throw off the proportions. And if you ever want to layer it, it's just going to look off. As for length, I always like to see right below the belt line. I do like an elastic around the bottom of the hoodie. Not all of them are going to have it. Uh, and if you raise your arms up, I don't like to expose my midsection. Some of you guys, you know, it depends on personal preference, but yeah, I never think it's a good look. Now, what are some really common mistakes I see guys making when they're wearing a hoodie? Probably the first one is that they're wearing a hoodie that is past its prime. They loved it and they've worn it maybe 20, 50, 100 times, whatever it is. They've washed it after every wear, but it is fading. It's falling apart. I get it if it's a work hoodie. Then in that case, yeah, keep wearing it. But if you're wearing it as a go-to daily staple, you want to be careful of wearing something beyond its ability to look good. Now, I talked about the different materials, cotton, polyester, fleece. You're going to see cashmere. You're even going to see some velvet hoodies out there. I would say when it comes to those higher end materials, especially cashmere, that's going to be for your dress hoodies. And in this case, you do not wash it after everywhere. Treat it like a sweater. You'll wear it multiple times. You're going to wear clothing underneath to protect it. So, in case you sweat, but a hoodie like this is something you're going to be, it's, you take very good care of it. You're going to be, it's a delicate piece of clothing. Now, fleece hoodies, polyester hoodies, these are going to do some of the best for actually maintaining their look. And that's because they're using synthetic materials. They do an excellent job of oftentimes retaining the dye, especially the, uh, the polyester ones or the fleece ones. Those can look really, really casual and uh, they often don't look as high end. I know a lot of people, they wear them more for function than they do for fashion, but I do think for a functional piece, actually fleece can do an excellent job of insulating. So, if you want something for the winter that's going to get the job done, you want something to be able to wear to the work site, then fleece is probably a good option. Now, I did mention polyester, especially when mixed with spandex or other materials. I think these performance materials have come a long way. I see tons of brands coming out and I've got a few that are, yes, made from polyester, but they look really nice. Am I going to be dressing them up with a sports jacket? Probably not, but they definitely are ones that I can wear independent of. You just simply with a pair of jeans and a pair of boots and they look good. And I found that polyester does a pretty good job of not fading. Cotton on the other hand, unfortunately, especially if it's a lower end 
cotton, which we see even some of the higher end companies. And this is where I wish I could tell you, you know, that I knew exactly which companies were using. Not always the best cotton, but you know, unfortunately, you know, that information changes every single year. I would say go in and just simply touch it, feel it. And you guys, if you have something to add in today's video, I would love to hear from down in the comments what your favorite hoodie brands are. Why do you like them? What do you wear? Guys, I really appreciate learning about more brands. I've only got a few, maybe a dozen that I've explored personally. And who knows, maybe I'll make a video in the future in which I'll buy a ton of hoodies and I will run them through the gauntlet and try to find the best. But I would love to hear from you guys down in the comments what your favorite brands are and why. Another mistake I see is the overuse of the kangaroo pocket. So, the kangaroo pocket, as the name implies, that's the pouch that you've got there in the front. And sometimes guys just overstuff it. Now, that's great if it's a work hoodie and you're using it for work. But if it's something that, you know, you want to be able to wear out, you want something to look good, you want to be careful about overextending that pocket, eventually creating a hole or a tear, just really looking like it's overused because it ruins the silhouette of the hoodie and it makes like you, makes it look like you got a little bit of a pouch right there in the front of you. Next up, let's talk about graphics. So, if you go back to the 1990s, this is really where you saw the use of graphics really pick up in hoodies and you've got guys, you know, like Tupac Shakur and Notorious B.I.G. These guys really Really brought it to the forefront and you know they did an amazing job with their looks creating these type of brands these styles this type of fashion nowadays though what i see at least trending in 2023 is that graphics are getting tuned down a bit now some people are still going to make it work and again if you are this fashion forward that you know how to pull it off what are you doing watching my video you should be making videos but um, i think for the majority of you guys if you just want something that's interchangeable something that you're going to be able to keep and wear for years go with something that's really muted and make sure any of the logos or the graphics are relatively small. Again, the exception would be if you're big in the streetwear and in that case, well, I probably don't have much to teach you. Now, what about ironing a hoodie? I don't think you need to and most hoodies I own, even the cotton ones, within a few minutes of wearing, usually my own heat actually kind of seems to get rid of any wrinkles. But if you own a steamer, if you have a hoodie that seems to stay wrinkled, maybe it's made from a bit of linen or something like that, which they are out there, summer hoodies like that, uh, just run a steamer over it. I think that will do a great job. Another added benefit benefit of a steamer is it's like a micro cleaning. So, you're going to be able to go longer without having to throw that thing into the wash. And that's another mistake I see a lot of guys make with their hoodies is they're washing them way too often. If you wear that hoodie for an hour and you don't sweat in it, you've got a shirt that, you know, an undershirt that you're wearing underneath it, I don't think you could take that thing off, hang it right back in your closet. If you're going to hang it in your closet, make sure that you've got a hanger with nice, you know, two to three inch shoulders on it so it doesn't leave any divots in there or fold it up, put it in your closet. Point being is you don't have to wash a hoodie after every wear. That being said, if you wear the hoodie for an hour and you're out working, sweating, you get dirt all over it, of course, you're going to throw that into the wash. My point here is that your clothing only has so many lives. So, imagine it's a video game. You got 30 lives. So, every time you throw it in the wash, you lose one of those lives because if you ever check the lint collector, where's all that lint coming from? It's coming from your clothing. It is slowly tearing apart your clothing when you wash it in a washer. So, if you really want something to last, hand wash it. If you don't want to be hand washing, then don't run things to the dryer, let them air dry. And if you've ever heard of spot cleaning, this is where you just identify the area of the garment where it got dirty, you clean that, you let it dry and yeah, then you wear it again. Next up, let's talk about over layering. So, in general, when I'm wearing a hoodie, I don't like to wear a collared shirt underneath. For me, it's a bit too casual. Although, there are going to be some v-neck hoodies that you could still pull off that look. Not really to my liking. I'm usually going to wear an undershirt that I could wear even a long sleeve like a Henley or something like that. So, wearing two shirts underneath, especially during the winter, I find does an excellent job of keeping me insulated. But where I think most people mess it up is not what they're wearing under the hoodie, but actually what they're wearing on top. And again, as we talked about earlier, this is where you want to make sure you get the hoodie to actually fit you properly. Because if you find that you're having trouble moving your arms, it's difficult to get your jacket on and off, or you're trying to wear a thinner jacket that's going to fit closer and the hoodie's causing it all to bunch up. Yeah, don't even try. Layering is a bit of an art. I've got a whole other video, which I will link to down in the description of today's video, talking about layering. But but uh, there is a key to actually making sure the fit is right on those undergarments that you're trying to put the overgarment on. The next mistake is wearing a hoodie in a situation in which honestly it doesn't belong. So, I compared the hoodie to the sweater. It's not at the same level as a v-neck sweater when it comes to layering. That being said, if it's your party, if you own the company, if you are in a position of power, you can pretty much wear it whatever you want. No one's going to say anything. But I do think a hoodie is not yet transcended to being able to wear in a business 
environment. Uh, again, unless you own the startup or you're, you know, out there. But if you're asking for money, I do think that you should dress appropriately in a way if you're going into a bank so that they trust you. Not necessarily, you know, I get it. You want to express yourself. You probably got other pieces in your wardrobe because in general, hoodies are casual and most people do still view them as coming out of streetwear. That's where they dominate. And for a lot of people, this isn't a garment that works well when you want to dress up. Now, at this point, you may be wondering, how does my style measure up? What actions do I need to take? Well, gents, if you haven't taken our style quiz over at Real Men Real Style, I'm going to link to it down in the description below. This is a free and fun quiz in which we ask you questions and then we give you a breakout of your style score in areas that you can improve. But if that's not enough, if you're a man that wants to take action, you're tired of watching all of these videos and not actually following through, going through and buying the clothing, revamping your wardrobe, improving your image, then you need to check out our course, The Style System. Over the last decade, this has been the internet's go-to professional men's style course in which we teach you exactly what you need to know. The goal of The Style System is to give you the information you need to take action so that you can become your best dressed self. Seriously, gents, you're going to walk into a room and unless I'm present, you're going to be the best dressed guy there. Seriously, I've met men who have gone through my course and they put me to shame at times because yeah, I dressed down and these guys came in and they owned the room. But seriously, gents, check out the course. It's all about action. It's about you taking the steps to become the man you know yourself to be. All the links to everything I just mentioned down in the description of today's video. All right, so now let's hit some frequently asked questions. First up, should you tuck in your hoodie? So, if you're really fashion forward, you want to do that front tuck, yeah, maybe you can make it work. I would say for the vast majority of us mere mortals, avoid tucking in your hoodie. Look for an elastic on the bottom. You don't want it to go too far down. You never want it to go past the buttocks. You want the hoodie to fit you well, not to be, you know, super long. I think wearing the hoodie untucked is the best way to go. Can you wear a hoodie to work? Again, depends on the job, depends on the dress code, depends on your position in the company. Now, even if your company doesn't have a dress code, they do have a dress code because otherwise you could show up naked and you don't. Point being is look around. Are people dressing casually? And again, now you've got all the different types of hoodies at your disposal. If it's a super creative company, of course you can wear pretty much anything. They're going to probably appreciate that you bring a bit of flair, a bit of fun to your style and you're going to put together a great outfit. But if it's a pretty conservative company, you may want to be careful. Again, you could wear a slim fit cashmere hoodie, put a blazer over it, especially maybe if you're in the IT field, you're on the creative team. Maybe you're, again, you're the founder of the company, you're a coder. I think you can find a way to make it work. Should my hoodie match my pants. I wouldn't say match your pants, but I would look to complement your pants. Now, the easiest type of trousers here were going to be jeans, but any type of pants that you've got in your wardrobe, if it works with a particular color of shirt, it's probably going to work with that color of hoodie. And I did start off by saying, if you're just introducing hoodies to your wardrobe, look to go with a neutral palette. These are going to be hoodies in black, gray, blue, brown, dark green, Keep it solid. Avoid a lot of graphics. You're going to find that these are going to work with a lot of the casual pairs of trousers. I really like wearing hoodies with maybe performance pants. You can also wear them with chinos and I think they look perfectly fine. What about shorts and hoodies? Yes, it's possible to pull this look off, especially if you're in California. Not just kidding. Anyone that, uh, you know, I like wearing shorts and I get it. Some nights you're just cooler. Hey, I keep a hoodie in the vehicle because my wife gets cold. I get cold sometimes and it's pretty versatile, you know, just as versatile as a sweater sometimes more versatile in different situations. I think the key here is to understand that if you're wearing shorts, we're going for a casual look. So, this isn't ever something you can really dress up. Some people, I know, wear blazers with shorts. You guys down in Bermuda, I salute you. But uh, trying to mix a hoodie in with that, yeah, not going to happen. How do I style a sleeveless hoodie? So, the first tip to styling a sleeveless hoodie is to actually have the guns to support it. Seriously, a garment like this is going to draw attention to the arms. So, you want to make sure that you've got nice arms, that you are fit. The worst thing you can do here is, or you know, and this applies to any type of vest, is to wear this and yeah, just simply it makes your arms look even skinnier. So, if you've got that covered, you could wear this with sport pants, you can wear this with joggers, even shorts and underneath you'd have like a layered tee. So, you do want to make sure you've got a shirt on in general underneath a hoodie because it's just going to protect your hoodie and yeah, you won't have to wash it as often because you're going to sweat and that shirt will catch it and yeah. It's just a smart thing to do. Now, gents, if you enjoyed today's video, you're going to love this video, boom, right here. Yeah, if you want to stop, yeah, stop wearing things incorrectly, guys. I got a whole series of videos to help you look your best. Check this video out right here, boom, click it magically. You'll be taken to the next video. It's amazing how that happens.